Excellent. And we'll go ahead and have Rep. Solman get us started. Great. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Chair Alonzo Leon, uh, Vice Chairs Weber and Neron, and members of the committee. For the record, I am Janine Solman. I'm the State Representative for House District 30, which includes areas of Banks, North Plains, Hillsborough, and Aloha Beaverton. I come to you today in support of House Bill 2570. I'm happy to be joined by Jill Hubbard and Dr. Joanna Good, professors that have knowledge, experience, and much time working on this bill. This bill is similar to House Bill 4098 from the 2020 session. It comes before this committee now with bipartisan and bicameral support. This bill would develop a statewide long-term strategic plan to integrate computer science education into the curriculum by guiding students from, from computer users to computer literate creators who are proficient in the concepts and practices of computer science. The pandemic has highlighted a need for technology access for work, school, telemedicine, and just keeping us connected socially during these difficult and isolating times. The pandemic has highlighted the need for digital literacy and exposed a substantial gap in the resources and access to technology that Oregon students have. We have also seen an acceleration of the work from anywhere trend. If we prepare our students well today and invest in broadband access across the state, it's easy to envision in the future someone living in Coos Bay and working for Intel in Hillsborough a real economic boom for rural areas. So a 2018 report showed that there were over 4,000 computing jobs open in Oregon, which was 3.3 times the national average. Yet participation in computer science education in Oregon is lower than in most states. In 2018, only 10% of those who took an AP computer science exam in Oregon were students of color. Only 23% of them were female. Much of the work of House Bill 2570 will be dedicated to examining the ways we can increase the participation of these traditionally underrepresented communities. It is so important that students find relevance in their education in today's world. We heard it earlier. And that we need to make sure that we, are, we prepare them for the workforce of tomorrow. The bill lays the foundation as a great start. This is the first important step of a nine-step plan. Please take note of the one-page document submitted as testimony on OLIS with solid visuals and information. It was developed by Rep. Hernandez, uh, Rep. Hernandez's office. Uh, we need to act now. The clock is ticking so that we don't fall further behind and we can be nationally and globally competitive. Thank you again to the fabulous professors that are here to testify and provide more information and to help field any of the questions. Colleagues, I urge your support and sponsorship. One quick little click is a critical step for our students and their future. Thank you. Thank you, Rep. Solman. Any questions for Rep. Solman? Okay, we'll go ahead and move on to uh, witness testimony. Um, we have uh, Joanne Good from uh, University of Oregon. Go ahead, Joanne. Thank you. Madam Chair Alonzo Leon, Vice Chairs Neron and Weber, and members of the Education Committee, thank you for this opportunity to speak. My name is Joanna Good, and I am a professor of education at the University of Oregon. I began my career as a math and computer science teacher in a large, diverse public school. For the past 20 years, I've studied how education policies and teaching practices impact computer science education in K-12 classrooms. With a historical trend of staggering racial and gender disparities in computer science education, my research has focused on how these policies and practices shape opportunities for BIPOC students to learn about computer science. I'd like to highlight three points in support of HB 2570. First, the current context of computer science in Oregon schools is uneven and infrequent. Oregon is the only state in the United States that has zero policies related to supporting K-12 computer science education. As a result, there are very few opportunities for students to learn about computer science. My own three children in elementary and middle schools in Eugene 4J schools have not learned about computer science at school. 
Looking at high school data, very few students from Oregon participate in either of the two advanced placement computer science courses. Less than 900 total students participated last year. And there's no doubt that computer science opens up education and career opportunities. The Bureau of Labor Statistics notes that up to 70% of new STEM jobs are in computing related fields. And yet in Oregon, there are scarce learning opportunities for our students. Second, without policies to support computer science education for all learners, existing computer science learning opportunities are rarely made available to BIPOC students and girls because of competing priorities, scarcity of resources, and biased belief systems about who belongs in computer science classes. In 2020, only 10% of advanced placement computer science students were Black, Indigenous, or Latinx, though these groups make up to 28% of Oregon students. Third, this legislation will build and support the earlier efforts we've been involved in as part of a National Science Foundation sponsored CS for Oregon project. This project is part of the National CS for All program launched by the Obama administration to democratize K-12 computer science. With my colleagues, Jim Hook from Portland State University and Jill Hubbard from Oregon State University Cascades, we have prepared and supported through curriculum and long-term professional development, 55 high school teachers from 31 schools who now teach introductory exploring computer science courses. We are heartened with the growing cadre of teachers in Oregon and the diversity of students in exploring computer science classrooms, yet our grant funding is unable to reach every school in Oregon. We need a systemic and sustainable state plan to bring equitable computer science learning opportunities to all students. This is why we need HB 2570. Every school and every child should have access to computer science learning in Oregon. This is an educational justice and a racial justice issue. Convening a committee charged with the development of state plan is a critical and necessary first step in this effort. I thank you all for your time and attention. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Good. Any questions for uh, Ms. Good? All right, and we'll move on. Uh, next, we have Jill Hubbard from Oregon State University Cascades. Go ahead, Jill. Hello. Um Madam Chair, members of the committee, my name is Jill Hubbard. I teach computer science at Oregon State University. I'm a, a co-principal investigator, as you heard from Joanna, on a grant entitled CS for Oregon, part of the National CS for All initiative sponsored by the National Science Foundation, um, focusing on broadening participation in computing along with Jim Hook, the Dean, Associate Dean of Engineering and Computer Science at PSU, and Joanna Good, Professor of Education at University of Oregon. Our team, along with the Oregon Department of Education re representatives, also comprise a leadership team that's part of something called Expanding Computing Education Pathways. And that's an alliance of computer science leaders across 22 states designated to increase the number and diversity of computer science students. I taught high school computer science for over 15 years. Before becoming a teacher, I worked in the computing industry as a senior design engineer for Intel Corporation. Thank you for allowing me to speak today. Uh, I was so impressed by all the young people speaking today, uh, and I am blessed to have the opportunity to work with young people as they discover their passions, their hopes, and their dreams. Sometimes my job is heartbreaking. Uh, often non-traditional students are at a disadvantage. They compete against others who were provided access early, were encouraged to participate from a young age, and for whom learning opportunities were intentionally designed. As a high school uh, computer science and engineering teacher, I designed and taught computer high school courses before frameworks clearly defining computer science for all concepts were developed. Despite my best efforts and intentions, and, and a lot of effort and a lot of intentions, my courses often perpetuated the opportunity gap until I had the opportunity to learn about experience and experience curriculum along with a professional development journey intentionally designed to change the narrative of what and who is computer science. 
um, over the period of time that I was just discussing, computer science has become essential knowledge needed by everyone to navigate a world where computing is part of our lives and often um, controls our lives. Uh, without it, no matter what field of study a student decides to pursue, they will be at a disadvantage. Currently, those experiencing this disadvantage are predominantly women and students of color. I have seen high school students take three PE classes in order to graduate, even though an introductory computer science class was available and would have been much more valuable in their lives, both personally and professionally. Uh, as I teach on the, high on the college level now, often undergraduate computer science students ask me, how do I become a teacher? How do I become endorsed to become a teacher? And I share that there is no computer science endorsement. It simply does not exist. I've seen investments in high school CS programs of study disappear after CTE teachers retire or leave for industry opportunities. CS programs are not sustainable without educators well-trained in the pedagogy of, affecting, of effective CS teaching, along with evidence-based curricular resources shown to change the narrative of who participates in computer science. This House bill brings together stakeholders with a variety of perspectives to create a thoughtful, scalable, sustainable, and most importantly, equity-focused computer science K-12 education plan for the state of Oregon. Uh, thank you for your time and for considering this bill.